Hi, welcome. In this session, I'd like to take you through my beta calculation page to show you the choices I've made and how they play out in the numbers and perhaps give you suggestions on how you can use this page. My objective in this page is to come up with betas for different businesses. Why? Because I need it in corporate finance and in valuation. So the first step in this process, obviously, is to take publicly traded companies and break them down by businesses. And that's what I start off with. Now, to break companies down to businesses, I have to make some choices. And the choices I make are reflected in the number of firms that you see in each business. So let me go column by column so you can see what I do in each step. The first step, of course, are the industry groupings. 94 different groupings, and you can see the groupings here. In the second column, I tell you the number of companies I have in each grouping. Obviously, these numbers will vary depending on the, group, uh, on the particular subgroup you're looking at and depending on the year that you're looking at the data. In the third column, you see a beta. You're saying, what is that? What I do is I take the betas, the, the regression betas for the publicly traded companies in this particular industry and I take a simple average of those regression beta. That is the beta column and that's the average beta across companies in this space. Then I go to town on this number. Here's the first thing I do. Remember, regression betas reflect both the business choices companies have made as well as how much debt they've chosen to take on. So I compute how much debt e companies in a sector have taken on by computing a debt to equity ratio. Now, this debt to equity ratio is total debt, all interest bearing debt, including lease commitments. And my equity is market value of equity. Now, the way I compute this ratio for the entire sector is I look at the total debt of all of the companies in the sector and I add up by the total market value of equity across all of the companies. It's an aggregate debt to equity ratio for the entire sector. You're saying, why do you do that? So taking a simple average of the debt to equity ratios, because the debt to equity ratios can have outliers. You can have companies with 6,000% debt to equity ratios, which can pull your average out. So I've computed an average debt to equity ratio. Now, here's my next step. I take my regression beta, the beta that I got by looking at the betas of the individual companies, and I unlever it. What I'm doing here is take out the effect of the debt to equity ratio, and you see the equation listed here. To unlever it, I need a debt to equity ratio, which I already have. I need a marginal tax rate because interest saves you tax at the margin, and I let you enter that number. But if you want to use an effective tax rate, I give you the choice, and I compute an unlevered beta. This is the beta for companies in advertising without any debt. Now I used to stop over here, but there's one more stop I need to make. Remember advertising companies are in advertising, but many of them also hold cash balances. You're saying, so what? Well, cash is invested in close to riskless investment with a beta of zero. To come up with an unlevered beta corrected for cash, here's what I do. I take the unlevered beta I got for companies. I assume that cash is a beta of zero, and I come up with an unlevered beta corrected for cash by putting all of the beta risk on the portion of the business that's non-cash. That is my estimate of a pure play beta. So if you ask me what's the beta being in the advertising business, my answer will be the unlevered beta corrected for cash. When I do valuation, that is the number that I use to build up to a beta of a company because I can bring in the debt and the cash the company has separately. Now let me complete the rest of the spreadsheet because there are a few other numbers I report. I report what's called a high-low risk number. You're saying, what is that? That's the difference in the high price and the low price over the most recent year divided by the sum of the two. So the higher that number, the more, the bigger the range in stock prices. Think of it as a price measured of risk. I also look at the standard deviation in stock prices. For those of you who don't like to use betas, which is a covariance measure, that's a pure volatility measure. I also compute a standard deviation in operating income over the last 10 years. Now you're saying, why go back the last 10 years? Remember, earnings are not estimated every day. If you're lucky, maybe they're one, once every quarter. So I need a lot of data, a lot of, peer, a lot of years to be able to do this. I compute the standard deviation operating income. Think of this as a variability in earnings for those of you who don't like to use price-based measures. Finally, in the last few columns, here's what I do. The betas for entire sectors can change over time. So I've kept track of what the unlevered beta for advertising has been in previous years, and I compute an average across time on this number. Think of it as an average of an average. I'm using the law of large numbers to work in both dimensions for me. So if you're worried about a single year's average being strange, you can use the average of the averages. So that is my beta page, and I hope you find it useful. Thank you very much for listening.